How you doing everyone? Hope you're having a great Tuesday. Here we are to analyze our two teams here, the People's Squad and also my team. We both improved just slightly this week, which I suppose is okay. That's what we're always looking for, but you know, a few things went wrong. I suppose that yeah, happened for a lot of different teams out there. But starting with the People's Squad, we had a 1,010 was our score last week, which brought us from you know high 500s in the overall rank to 545. And, and with the injuries and suspensions that have happened this week, I think it puts us in really good stead to utilize that five trades that we've got to bring in some of, uh, you know, just some replacements, really, you know, guys that are at a similar level, whether, you know, 55 point scorer or something like what we've got with Reed or Angus Crichton, these types of guys. I think it's going to be really helpful for us to, to progress in the ranks over the next few weeks or the last sort of, you know, five rounds of the, of the season there. Five rounds? 22, 3, 4, 5. Four rounds. Um, but yeah, so Reed Marne. We had him for a bunch of weeks now, which is ideal. Only just brought him in in my team. So the 44, thankfully, he did get to play the, you know, basically the majority of the game there before getting injured. So for us, that's going to be a nice straight swap to someone, which we'll, we'll go through um, in a little bit, sort of a couple of the replacements that we might be looking at. But yeah, 44 will take with, you know, Papali'i with 55, Haas as captain with 57. One of the best options, really. He didn't fail us, but, you know, only really for feeder, Cam Murray, um, and then Turbo or Tedesco we could have picked as well that beat him, but yeah, we'll take the 57 <clears throat> and run with it. Tamalola is the one that's a bit of an issue at the moment. Yeah, do we do we continue to pursue it and play him? I, I think we can, but yeah, the last three weeks haven't been very good, that's for sure. Nothing over 50 in that last three after after getting those that bunch of 60s there. So that's the one to think about, and he kind of dropped our score a little bit when, when he's owned by, you know, not a a huge percentage in 13%, obviously a lot more in the sort of top 5,000, but it kind of hurts you when he has that, that lower score there. Crichton with 56, thankfully we got him for the whole game, um, you know, for feeder 69 off the bench again, got back into his tackle busting ways and scored a try. So remember that game before was only, you know, one tackle break and, and very much out of character for, for, for feeder there. In terms of our halves, we had a bit of a lower week with Hughes which and Gamble. Uh, both of those guys have been really dominant for us. This season, especially, um, you know, we've had them both now for maybe what eight or nine weeks, so been really, really good for us. So just a bit of a lighter game. So if they had a big one, we'd have a huge week because you know when you look at our centers and, and wing fullbacks and our bench, we absolutely killed it. So Ramian with sixty one was awesome. I still think clearly the best option in the centers at this stage. Manu's been amazing, um, and you can tell that by his price. So he just had a bit of a run, whereas Ramian's just been super consistent for the entire year. You, know, you never really see a, a game under forty for Jesse. And that's exactly what you want in the centers, and it just make, helps you breathe easy. Obviously, did miss that game last week with the ear infection, but he's been awesome. And then Avarillo just you know taking control of the team again was very very helpful for for our squad, but also anyone who decided to hold him uh, through obviously his dip in about 170k of value. So he was great. Reese Walsh for 53, and he's gonna he's gonna carry that team really. You know they were much better with their forwards back, even though. <laughs> They're, um, even though they weren't that great in general, it was a bit of a scrappy game. But yeah, whilst he was 53, with a little try there. Didn't do anything spectacular to still get 50 odds, so that's really cool uh, and really helpful if you are playing him or if you have him as like an 18th man or a bench guy. <clears throat> it's really helpful. Tommy Chaboyevic in a, in a game where they got beat and was still able to get 61, so that's amazing. Is it 971k now? Could be our next million dollar man. He'll uh, have to get one more big score to do that. And Tedesco's coming back with a vengeance. You know, that three game stretch has been really, really cool. For him, we brought in Cam Murray this week, and that was awesome. That one trade only it picks up seventy for us. Moses with fifty six, DCA fifty three, and also Adam Dewey with fifty four. We decided not to play. Oh, we decided to have Watson as our emergency guy, so our potential loop player, um, and picked up thirty two. So we didn't do that. We also had Schuster there was an option, but we weren't sure how he was going to go uh, against the storm, and he actually did pretty well. So we'll take that. But yeah, we we really we picked our. We picked our interchange is really good, and I thought, you know, picking Gamble was going to be, he did play, obviously, the first game. I was like, well, he's been scoring, you know, averaging 60, so we got to play him. Um, so really, I think our decision to, to play who we did worked out fine. Um, it's good that we have a, a bunch of different players, and the cool thing here is we could actually use a uh, cash out, really. If we wanted to get Cleary back, we really could this week. You know, we have <coughs> Crichton and Mane who are out, and we do have a little bit of cash in the bank, 26. If we went, you know, Crichton down, or we'll say Mane down to, you know, we picked up 400K, we get really close to Cleary. We, we had to get him over the next few weeks with the five trades if we wanted to utilize them. We'd go cash out or we can just go, you know, two straight swaps. 
So I suppose that's the question now. Are we going to be trading? I think we should just trade Mane and and Crichton out. In terms of cover for the hooker position, we don't have a lot other than um, obviously Connor Watson, but we don't want to be playing him, right? So our question will be, which hooker do we pick? There's a few there. We've got Damien Cook. We have Harry Grant. <coughs> we have Brandon Smith. They're probably the top three, right? And the question is, which one of those do you pick? Does any of them get rested? Does Cook get rested? Does Grant start to play more minutes as it gets closer to the finals? Um, they're probably my two. And I think you know both we can pick up really easy. I suppose it, would, it will be dependent on that second position as to who we'd want, if we'd want Grant or Cook. So if we look at that and we go back to all positions, you know what kind of priced players are available. Um, and you know if we look at it, we can literally get two of any player, right? If we go from Munster down, we could get we have 26k, which you know that added onto the the 695 will get us what's that 720, 721. So we could get two of whoever we want, you know, Munster and Cook. We could go for. Um, would be fine. We do have a lot of halves in the team. Do we want another edge? Because, you know, we could have Murray that moves into the edge position. Would be fine. And then have Schuster as our cover. That would be cool. So we can do Munster Cook. Do we think any of them is going to get um, rested at all? We could go Josh Jackson. I think would be pretty safe. But really, other than that, there's not a lot of options. Unless you're going to go for a Ponga or something. We do have cover in the wing fullback position already. We don't have cover in the center position. So that could be something that would be a smart idea. So if we were to do something like that, then you'd be looking at a Jack Bird, uh, a Joey Manu, that type of player, I think. So I suppose it'll, it'll come down to what we all decide in you know, in our group chat, uh, in the Discord there. But you know, Jack Bird's gonna be solid, or Jack Bird, Manu, Gagai, or Rapana, I think are the options. So would we wanna do that? Or you know, with us still having three trades after this this week, can we, can we deal with not having cover in the centers and just getting but get someone in when we need to that could be the question but that's the team at the moment let me know what you guys think of where we're at obviously i think really good position at the moment to, to sneak into the top 400 300 uh, over the next few weeks with all these trades left i know a lot of people are still holding high and chn all these kind of, like similar to what my team's about to be um, with limited trades so unfortunately for me here a decent week 990 gained a couple of extra couple of ranks from being 980 odd but obviously used my two trades last week and brought in reed marnie which was, which was a tough one, that's for sure, when you bring him in and he gets injured straight away. But obviously it is what it is. Brought Adam Dewey in, he got 54. Having Madison there has been really solid with 64. Another great week. Joey Manu, 64, and Bird, 61. The two best centers in the game for this week was really ideal. And then the same same bottom three with the wing fullbacks. And just a bit of a very, 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 very light interchange with Watson, Tamalolo, um, and Verrill. So thankfully, you know, with Foggs looking like he wasn't going to play, I decided to play Verrill's um, and take that instead of the possible 25, which worked out 18 points better. So we'll take that for sure. But yeah, when you're sitting there with Watson, Lolo, Mane, Crichton, um, and you're starting Schuster, like I don't have a, a Hughes or a DCE or anything like that, it makes it really tough to, to work out. And the question this week is going to be, how do I replace these two guys? Do I just go, obviously Reed's going to go, and Crichton at 58k in the bank. So I have that same option of, of picking up pretty much whoever I please. Like I think Cam Murray's a really good option for me to cover Crichton. And then I could pick up another half if I wanted to. But I still think, you know, that hooker position is, is very much down at the moment. And, and my question's going to be, you know, if Fogs come back, I'm okay. But there's a very high chance that he doesn't, end up playing for the rest of the year like Toby Sexton's been really good I feel like that's the main issue at the moment is that Toby's go going great and they don't actually need Fogs to to play really like to, to actually come back in and play like they were a really strong team on the weekend um you know the Cowboys weren't very good in general obviously but yeah like what do I do with him do I end up moving him on as well and then you got CHN um, and Watson who aren't going very well either so the team's not looking in too good a shape apart from you know sort of the center's uh, the wing fullbacks and then and having Madison, uh, having Madison in there as well. So the question will be: Does do we pick up a you know a Cook and a, a Cook and a Munster, a Cook and a Murray? Uh, those type, kind of guys would be completely okay for this squad. But then I'll have to utilize my last trade, I imagine, for a Fogs or a CHN or something like that. And yeah, you can tell obviously that this team's not in as good a shape as the people squad at the moment, just for the circumstances. Like you know, I was, I was sitting about. 2000 rank and, and drop down to 700 pretty quick in a few weeks and then you know a lot of things change in the one week and and here you are so i suppose that's it with the um with the two teams guys let me know what you think you'd do with this one there's obviously a lot 
a lot to think about and and yeah, do I move on? I think Fogs you can kind of wait on. You know, you know, with Reed's out for the year, with Crichton he's out for three weeks, and then yeah, the the question's going to be what do we do with Fogs because there's a chance that he comes back in the next few. Um, and if you trade him out, you'd be pretty shitty, you know, coming into that little last that last few rounds. But there you go, guys. Hope you enjoyed that. We'll uh, we'll catch you in the next one when we go through the team list. See you later.